All right, so we have some updates in regards to Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Complete in that theatrical re-release and how they're going to be attaching a new short film in front of that movie. And also, Yoshi P has made some interesting comments in regards to the future of gaming and how he thinks it might move more towards cloud-based gaming. So if any of that sounds cool to you, feel free to click the like button. And if you're new here and you would like to stick around, you can subscribe as well. It is always appreciated. So starting off first with that Final Fantasy VII seven advent children complete 4k version <laughs> that's a mouthful to say it is going to be getting a theatrical re-release next year in japan and here in america for japan i believe it's early january through february and for us here in america it's going to be towards the tail end of february when they're going to be running that movie again in theaters and it was recently announced today that they're going to be attaching a short film in front of the movie for its theatrical run Twitter account Final Weapon has more details by saying, a new short film will air before the movie featuring new interviews with the Final Fantasy VII development team and Advent Children creators alongside action-packed gameplay from the game. Which sounds super cool. So it kind of sounds like this is going to be more of a developer diary kind of video that plays before the movie. So I would expect them to sit down with people like Kitase, Nomura, maybe Nojima and Hamaguchi, and just kind of have them talk about their overall experience with Advent Children and Rebirth and Final Fantasy VII as a whole. And I'm also very curious to see what kind of gameplay footage they're going to be showing off because again, for us here in the States, this is going to be releasing fairly close to the release of Rebirth. So I don't know if they're going to want to give away too much or if they're just going to show off a lot of the stuff we've already seen before. But either way, this sounds super cool. Now, I don't know if this theatrical re-release is going to be a nationwide thing or if it's going to be more of a limited run kind of situation. So you'll probably have to check with your local theaters to see if they're going to even bring the movie to your city or state. I'm guessing it's probably going to be more of a limited run kind of thing, so only some of the select markets across the country will probably get this event. But I would expect the developer diary to make its way online shortly after, maybe on the Final Fantasy YouTube channel, so we can all check it out, see some of the gameplay and what the developers have to say about this entire franchise. So moving on to those comments from Yoshi P about cloud gaming and how that could potentially be the future. So this comes to us from an interview that was done recently with Yoshi P on a Japanese website that was posted onto YouTube. But thanks to Genki on Twitter, he translated some of this interview for us to read. So Genki says, Yoshi P said as a developer, he wants to make games that go beyond platforms. He thought there was a good chance the console wars might end this generation, but said the pandemic delayed things and it will probably continue for one more generation. Generation. He said that if you want as many people in the world to play your game as possible, then it is better if you can play it regardless of the platform. The gamers will be happy and also us developers will be happy, says Yoshi P. He thinks in the future, about 10 years from now, there will be no need for platforms as everything will be accessed through the cloud. But for now, there aren't enough servers and the connection speeds aren't fast enough to combat lag for it to be possible right now. So obviously there is a lot to unpack there with that statement, but we'll start off first with the whole ending of the console generation thing. There really isn't a console war anymore, unless you're looking at fanboys, <laughs> which is kind of silly. If you're someone who prefers one platform and their games over the other, that's totally fine. But when people engage in the whole fanboy war and say stuff like, you're stupid for liking this, you're dumb for liking that, our console's better than your console, you have no games, it gets really toxic and it doesn't serve anybody. So. I think people should pull back on that. But if you look at the sales, the PlayStation 5 is outselling the Xbox Series X and S uh, by pretty insane amounts. So there really isn't much of a competition anymore. But also looking at companies like Microsoft and Sony, they're doing two completely different things. With Microsoft, it's pretty clear that they shit the bed back in 2013 with the launch of the Xbox One. They were so focused on creating an all-in-one media machine that could play movies and TV shows and music and act as a DVR, but there was no focus on games there. TV, TV, and TV, 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 Xbox, go home. And you can argue that that botch is still affecting Microsoft to this day, and they've never really recovered from it. But you also have to take into consideration what Microsoft is planning. And I don't really think console sales are all that important to them anymore. It seems pretty clear that their main platform is no longer the Xbox One console, it's Game Pass. That is their new platform, and they wanna get that in front of as many people as possible, whether it's through your phone, your game console, your PC, your tablets, or your television. That is the future for Microsoft. So I could technically see them 
moving into the future, becoming a cloud-based company with things like Game Pass and their cloud-based streaming service, xCloud, where you can just stream games on whatever device you're using. As for Sony, they did have some plans leak recently that stated that they may do something very similar to what Microsoft is doing in regards to building an ecosystem with PlayStation Plus and doing streaming stuff, which could work out, but Sony doesn't really need to do that because they still sell a ridiculous amount of consoles. The PlayStation 5 is still selling like it's brand new, which is pretty nuts. And then of course you got Nintendo off in the corner just kind of doing their own thing. <laughs> what they do doesn't really seem to affect Microsoft and, and Sony. It's kind of a two separate worlds kind of situation. But even with those changes, I don't really see consoles going away within the next 10 years. I really do think we're going to have a PlayStation 6 and possibly a PlayStation 7. Now granted, again, these companies are moving in different directions. Microsoft might be totally okay with abandoning their consoles and just doing a Fire Stick or some sort of device that connects to your TV or your computer or whatever to get Game Pass into your house. But people have been saying for decades now, oh yeah, this upcoming generation, this is the last one that's going to have consoles and then consoles come out. Oh no, it's going to be the next generation. <laughs> that's the one where they're going to stop. And then more consoles come out. So it's really just kind of up in the air and it kind of depends on how technology is moving. Now, in regards to his statement about reaching a lot of people, I agree with him. It really does suck when a third party game is locked to one console specifically because the less people that get to play it, the less money for the company, the less chances that game does well. And also if the game is just genuinely really good, more people would get to experience it. But it is kind of ironic that he makes that statement since Final Fantasy 16 is a PlayStation 5 console exclusive. It is coming to PC, but there are zero signs of it ever coming to an Xbox platform. So that is kind of funny <laughs> that he brings that up and then you've got 16 over in the corner just kind of stuck on PlayStation. And to his final point, again, I do not see us resorting to solely cloud-based stuff in the next 10 years. The internet infrastructure in America and just throughout the world is not up to snuff enough to support a sole cloud-based future where you're streaming all of your games and streaming the music and streaming TV and streaming movies. It's just not strong enough to do so. Here in America in particular, uh, the internet providers are all over the place. And depending on where you live, you probably only have one choice for your internet provider. And if they're good, that's great. If they're bad, then it sucks. <laughs> and there's not much that you can do about it. And it also depends on your living arrangement. You might live in an apartment where you're sharing internet with everyone in that building. You might live in an area that has no access to internet. So you have to do stuff like satellite internet, which isn't really all that great. And obviously, if Yoshi P is speaking more on a Japanese infrastructure, then yeah, the internet in Japan is way different than here in America. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Japan is just so much smaller. Uh, it's smaller than even California. So if someone on one end of Japan is playing a fighting game against somebody in the other end of Japan, chances are their experience playing that game will be pretty smooth because of how small it is. There's less latency, less room for them to have to travel with their connections, all that crazy stuff. So the overall infrastructure of the internet, its reliability, its speeds, it's just too all over the place for me personally to see us relying on cloud-based systems in the next 10 years. I just don't think that's feasible right now. And I don't know if technology is moving fast enough for it to become feasible within those next 10 years. So I genuinely hope that we don't move towards a future where it's strictly cloud gaming. I like having a console. I like being able to buy a physical disc if I want to, or just download downloading the game if that's the better option. And lastly, from Yoshi P's perspective, obviously he is a third party game developer. He's gonna want more people to play his games and the stuff that he works on, but I don't know how much info he really has or how much connection he has with a lot of the upper people in these studios like Sony and Microsoft and the Nintendos of the world. So I don't know if he really has a grasp on what they personally wanna do in the future or if they even want to move to a completely cloud-based system because looking at Sony, they seem perfectly happy just selling tons of PlayStation 5s and they'll probably do the same thing with PlayStation 6, who knows? But to end the video, I do want to end on a quote from chef and entertainer Eddie Huang, where he talks about physical media and he says, there's something really meaningful about going to a store and getting what you came for and what you wanted, or sometimes what you need. 
I am Curious Corduroy. That is the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this Advent Children re-release. Do you guys plan on seeing it if it ends up in your area? And what do you guys think about the future of gaming? Do you think we're going to move to a solely cloud-based gaming era where we don't have consoles anymore or physical media? And is that something you even want? I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.